this is another fan favorite topic. I mean, this is something that people fascinate over. This is something that Gary Habermas has talked a lot about, the Shroud of Turin. And yes. there is a lot of speculation around it. Gary Habermas, I think if I recall right, he said he's about 80, 85% sure that this is actually the burial cloth of Jesus. So, the, but still there are a lot of speculations around. Now we just have a few minutes before us. So can you give a quick overview on what is happening in the academic side of this discussion? Uh, is there any new breakthroughs coming around or is that still same more speculations and debates? I think, okay, so real quick, quickly, um, and I'm familiar with Gary's work on this. Uh, I, he actually stayed at my house years ago. He missed a flight, and we actually went down to my library in my own study, and I had a book on the shroud, and I asked Gary about it. It was a book by Ian Wilson called The Blood of the Shroud, and so years ago, I, I was had the blessing of being with Gary in my own house to talk about the Shroud of Turin and have since talked to him about this extensively and I've read stuff he's did on it. I, I did a, uh, uh, at the National Apologetics Conference, I, I did a uh, seminar like thing with him and then other archaeologists on this. But what Gary says, and I'm just going to repeat what he says, is that um, what they do is they eliminate what it's not. It's mm -hmm. not a painting. Right. Uh, it's It can't be produced by technological means that yeah. we have today and uh the only explanation are intense radiation and there mm -hmm. are two kinds of radiation that could form this kind of image and it would be gamma ray and x-ray radiation mm -hmm. uh so again uh it is a non-provenance artifact and the fact mm -hmm. that we it, it sort of appears in the historical record in about the 14th century in yeah. a church in northern italy but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have historical uh, significance because it hmm. really very much could. Yeah. And I'm with Gary on this. Um, I tend to lean toward the fact that it may be authentic. Hmm. Um, it's just there's no way to know with 100% certainty. Again, archaeology is not 100% certain, but you rule out what it could not be. Uh, but there are just so many things that just can't be explained as just mere coincidence. And uh, one of the things that Gary told me years ago, I don't know if you've had him on or talked about this, there are so many things, but two that really, really were impressed to me was the uh, was the sequence of the image. So you can't even see it with a naked eye. You can only see it through a negative, so a photographic okay. negative. So if you look at the shroud, the face of Christ, if you were to just hold the shroud up, you really couldn't see it because it's so mm -hmm. light. You have to actually put it through a, uh, like a negative photo, uh, a neg photographic negative to see it. But it's the sequence of the images. So there's blood on the shroud. Shroud, hmm. And then there's the image of the face and the body in the shroud. But this is the sequence. The sequence was that the blood came first and then the image, okay. which, is, which is really cool. I mean, because if the body was wrapped quickly after the death on the cross, because they had to get him down off the cross hmm. and wrap the body. And they didn't have time to get the wounds, you know, the blood off the wounds, because that's what the women were going to do when they came yeah. to the empty tomb. They were going to clean the body because it was wrapped up. Hmm. So the blood was given, and then the image came through. So that is really interesting to me. And then Gary was was sharing with me about this um, when I was actually going to be on the History Channel. No, it was on CNN. Um, they contacted me to to interview me on the Shroud, and I actually emailed Gary, and I was like, "Hey, man, you they should you should be on this." And he said, "No, Ted, you should do it." So he told me to read a book by a scholar by the name of Frederick Zugby called "The Crucifixion of Jesus," and I would recommend that to your listeners if they want to read an account. Uh, of the physiological historical account of what crucifixion was like and uh, from and how it would actually uh, you know be how, how it would actually affect a, a human body then they should read the account it's called the crucifixion of Jesus by Frederick Zugby and it is quite remarkable and, and Zugby actually gets into the image on the shroud and talks about this image is very consistent with what we see of a of a human body hmm. and the early state of rigor mortis after right. it, it had died yeah. uh so it's it's pretty amazing and i i lean towards that it could be authentic but again um even if we didn't have the shroud hmm. jacob i think a case can be made very strongly historically that the new testament is historically reliable yeah. and that it gives us an accurate account of the life death burial and resurrection of jesus 